five minutes. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I thank my colleague from Tennessee, uh, making sure uh, that uh, some of the great uh, plays in the world have come back to the hearing today. That was great stuff. Thank you. I got I to gotta pick back up with Mr. Serio. Is that a, that's your name? Suero? Suero. Yeah. Suero, my apologies. You're good. Um, what happens if costs are raised on a bank or any other institution? Who really bears the burden of that? So when you say costs, do you mean which costs are you referring to? Let's put it this way. If there is regulation or if there is a ruling or if there is an opinion, let's call it the CFPB, that actually has downward pressure on bank fees, how is a bank supposed to make up the lack of revenue? So there's a number of different ways. In overdraft and credit card fees, there's a lot of surveys and a lot of evidence to suggest that if you lower fees, you could gain more customers. So, Ms. Ms. Suero, right? Yes. Surveys by who? By Any of the people that have written these surveys actually run an institution or run a business? Like, so who's put out these surveys? Well, we know, for example, Morning Consult has put out these surveys, business uh, analyst institutions. We've put out these surveys, Financial Health Network, as well as the FDIC and, and CFPB. Okay, so none of these people have actually run an institution. They are just commenting on the operations of an institution. Would you agree with that? In the case of the surveys, yes. Okay, so people who do not run an institution are commenting on the fact that if you lower fees, you might potentially get more customers. That's almost similar to the Biden administration saying that if we just expanded electric cars in the United States, people would just buy them. But the automakers are realizing that's not been the case. Would you concur with that assessment? Well, we know that a lot of financial institutions are actually taking these strategies and having success with them. A lot of financial institutions already offer no overdraft fees and have lowered uh, a lot of their other fees and have gained consumers in the process. All right, well, let's do this. Mr. Serio, hold tight. Let's go to an expert in the matter, somebody who actually does this. Ms. Johnson, how do CFPB mandates, which are effectively government price caps, close out the market? How does it take away products? What does it actually do to the operations of an institution? So all those things that fees cover, including the cost of providing the, the credit underwriting, the cost of fraud protection, the cost of uh, expanding access to other individuals and offering things like free checking accounts, those costs go up. Uh, we're at a, time, a, a point in time where we are reaching more underbanked individuals than we've ever reached before in the banking system, something that was, has been incredibly bipartisan. We're at 96%. And we stand to lose ground on this. We really stand to actually take steps backwards if we lose products like overdraft, if we lose products like credit cards. Those are some of the most important tools that consumers have to actually have access to, to credit that we all want them to have. So let's restate. Some of these products are critical for people who are either unbanked or underbanked to come into the financial system. And your testimony is, is that if the CFPB has their way, they're going to limit those products overall or limit the ability for people who are underbanked or unbanked to be able to access them. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. Ms. Harbin, can you elaborate on the compliance costs incurred by businesses while they wait for obviously unconstitutional CFPB regulations to be overruled by the courts? So I 100% agree with Ms. Johnson on the impact that the CFPB and the rulemaking has on financial institutions. These rules uh, do not happen in a vacuum, and they are one on top of another that ex put us in an extremely uh, vulnerable position to continue serving our members and those with less um, thin credit scores, marginal credit. So we would either have to eliminate services or charge for services that we could, don't currently charge for to make up the fees that are lost from these rulings. So, so Ms. Harbin, I, I want to I want to focus this in. Okay. So your testimony is that if these fees are limited by the CFPB or the overregulation from the CFPB, it would actually put pressure on your institutions, the ones you represent, to have that, to have at, to have to actually charge or raise the cost of the products themselves for consumers who are either unbanked or underbanked or new into the financial system. Is that That's correct? That's true. Mr. Sirio, correct? Did I get it right again? You're, you're close. Suero. Suero. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Now, listening to the testimony from the two individuals that actually represent 
banks that have to do this every day, do you still stand by your testimony? I, 100%, and I would point to examples in Wells Fargo and Bank of America who have actually lowered overdraft fees and also offered small dollar loans, affordable small dollar loans, as alternatives to overdraft that have worked really well. Mr. Chairman, if you'll indulge me, you will acknowledge that Wells Fargo is a massive bank, but community banks, by the way, I used to work for Wells Fargo and I worked for a mm -hmm. community bank. A massive bank can absorb that. A community bank cannot. I yield. Yeah. Gentlemen's time's expired.